Hello, and welcome to the Reselling Report podcast for today, Monday, June 29th, 2020. I'm your host, Ann Eckhart, and every weekday I upload the Reselling Report to update you on the day's retail and e-commerce news, including the latest from eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and Poshmark. If you haven't done so already, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's get on with today's show. Well, happy Monday, everyone. I hope everyone had a good weekend, whether you were sourcing for your business or working on listings. I was going to go to a few sales on Saturday, and then I woke up and said, you know what? No, I'm going to reorganize things. I'm going to reorganize my inventory. I'm going to start a sale 40% off my entire eBay store because I want to move some things out. And I really want to get away from breakable items, even though I've picked some up as of late. I know. Uh, Basically, anything that requires a packing peanut, I've decided, you know, if I need packing peanuts to ship, I really don't want to do that anymore. They're expensive, they're messy, and yeah, so I have a big sale going on, and it will go on as long as I have packing peanuts to ship, and when I'm out of packing peanuts, anything breakable that's left is going to my local consignment stores. So that is what I spent my weekend doing, rearranging and organizing here in my home. I hope that if you were able to get out that you were safe. The uh, coronavirus cases in America are spiking again. We are going in the wrong direction, particularly California, Arizona, Texas, and Florida are seeing huge surges, and it is causing hospitals to become full. Remember, that is why we need to do the social distancing, the wearing of the masks, is to ensure that there is ICU capacity available for people who need it. Not just people who have COVID-19, but People who need it without that, heart attacks, strokes, cancer, car accidents, lots of other reasons that people end up needing an ICU bed. So that is why, please wear a mask when you're in public, continue to social distance, wash your hands, stay home if you're not feeling well. If we all do these pretty simple things, we can get our lives back. But uh, as long as people aren't social distancing and not wearing masks, the virus will unfortunately continue to spread and our healthcare system will continue to be overrun. And that can mean that things will have to shut down completely again. So please be safe and take those precautions when you are out and about. Turning to the reselling sites themselves today, we're going to start with eBay and over on the eBay for Business Facebook page. There's a little message from the new CEO, Jamie Ioni, and he Uh, recorded about a five minute video where he just talks about coming back to eBay. And he does address the current situation, the um, indictments of six former eBay employees for cyber stalking a blogging couple. He does talk about that a bit. So uh, I just really personally appreciate that we're getting these updates from eBay. Obviously, this is an ongoing case, there's only so much they can say. But he does talk about the situation a bit. And um, I really like the communication that we're getting not only uh, now from our new CEO of eBay, but Jordan Sweetnam has also been addressing the community. And you can see, uh, watch or listen to uh, Jamie Ioni's entire message. Again, it's over on the eBay for Facebook page. Also, the eBay for Business um, page is showcasing the seller stories to celebrate eBay's 25th anniversary. They are telling the stories of sellers who have helped the site get to where it is. And this says the history and future are built on the millions of stories shared between buyers and sellers on our platform. And they have um, an interview with Cami Nyquist, I believe, uh, how she fuses compassion and innovation to power her nonprofit business, Swede Mom. So you can go over there and check out this mini story. And we'll be getting 25 of these seller stories um, in the coming weeks as part of eBay's 25th anniversary. Sticking with eBay, eBay has posted a new announcement over on the eBay community forum that's titled Important Reminders from our 2020 Spring Seller Update. Uh, The post reads, changes to handling item not as described return requests for all sellers. In our 2020 Spring Seller Update, we announced that starting June 1st, 2020, you'll be required to respond within three business days when a buyer requests to return items that don't match listing descriptions through eBay's money back guarantee. When you do not respond within that time period, we may refund the buyer and seek reimbursement from you without requiring the buyer to ship the item back. 
The launch date for the response requirement on returns that don't match listing descriptions has been rescheduled to July 20th, 2020. So eBay has um, extended the seller protections due to the coronavirus pandemic and some delays in shipping and other issues that sellers could be having. So again, we now have tw- July 20th is the new date uh, for eBay to um, back up those money back guarantees for buyers. So if you are still having issues with shipping and fulfillment, still have a little bit of time, but of course, try to be on top of everything you're doing, ship quickly, communicate with buyers, don't use this as an opportunity to just Slack and email cover you. Uh, You want to make sure that you're doing your part. This post goes on to talk about eBay integrated shipping carrier requirements. It says, in addition, we announced that starting June 1st, 2020, You'll be required to use eBay integrated shipping carriers that provide regular shipment scans in order to protect you from item not received claims filed through eBay's money back guarantee. The launch date for the new integrated shipping carrier requirement has been rescheduled. Starting July 20th, 2020, you'll be required to use eBay's integrated shipping carriers that offer tracked services when you ship to protect yourself from items not as described claims received through eBay's money back guarantee. Lastly, we also announced that starting June 1st, 2020, we may decide a case in buyer's favor without requiring the buyer to contact eBay if tracking with scans that prove shipment of the item were not provided by the seller within three business days after an item not received case was open. The launch date for the new valid tracking requirement has been rescheduled for July 20th, 2020. If you are not currently uploading any tracking information within three business days after an item not received case was opened, we may already decide the case in the buyer's favor. Buyers are more confident their orders will arrive when they receive regular shipping status updates and less likely to file item not received claims when their orders are not received by their estimated date. As always, thank you for selling on eBay. So as long as you're shipping through eBay and you're shipping in a timely matter, that information, the tracking gets uploaded uh, immediately. So the only time I don't ship directly through eBay, once in a blue moon, if there's something that I would ship through UPS ground, I might just go onto their site and do the label through there and then put the tracking, but that's been a long, long time. I can't remember the last time I shipped outside of eBay. So again, as long as you're shipping through eBay, all of this tracking information is uploaded directly to the site and to the seller. So that will back you up in case there is any kind of issue. But again, the new date uh, for these protections has been extended to July 20th as carriers still are seeing some backlog and delays due to the pandemic. We've been talking a lot on the show about how the coronavirus pandemic has accelerated the growth of e-commerce as more people than ever are shopping online. And there's a new article over on themontleyfool.com titled, Forget eBay, Amazon will be the long-term winner from lockdown orders. So I thought this was interesting to share with all of you as we have seen most of the reselling sites really surge uh, in the past few months, but there is some talk about how Amazon will come out the strongest of all. I don't think that's any surprise, but I did want to share this article with you. So it reads, when it comes to stay-at-home orders, part of the population is still anxious about going out. The other part seems to be going stir-crazy. In a world where it seems certain, e-commerce has left forward. While companies like Amazon and eBay are both benefiting from this trend in the short term, there are several reasons that Amazon will be the long-term winner. The coronavirus pandemic is reshaping the retail industry, at least in the short term. According to research from eMarketer, U.S. e-commerce sales in 2020 are expected to increase by 18% annually. In stark contrast, retail sales are projected to decline more than 10% year over year. To put the online sales growth in perspective, during 2019, U.S. online sales grew by 14.9%. In addition, research from Digital Commerce suggests that e-commerce penetration increased each of the last nine years. It seems clear that online shopping is gaining traction each year. While overall sales are increasing, there is a dominant force in the e-commerce in the U.S., and that is Amazon. The e-marketer study found that Amazon took 38% of U.S. e-commerce sales in May. Somewhat surprisingly, Walmart took second place at 5.8%, and eBay finished third at 45 There are more than a few key differences between Amazon and eBay, but one of the most prominent is Amazon Prime subscription. An RBC survey of 2,800 consumers found that 64% of Amazon customers made at least two or three purchases a month, 
up from 54% in the year prior. Good grief, I make two to three purchases a week. <laughs> Nearly half of these respondents said they spent more than $200 on the site in the last three months. Yeah, I spent a little more there too. Yeah. Uh, Amazon Prime subscribers are some of the most loyal buyers on the site. Amazon confirmed it had 150 million Prime members in January, and some analysts believe that this figure could be approaching 200 million. Keep in mind, these are just Prime members. Amazon's total member count is likely much larger. In Prime membership alone, Amazon witnessed a more than 30% increase in membership in roughly half a year based on those estimates. To give investors a sense of how massive the gross is, during the first quarter, eBay's entire registered membership grew 2% annually, yet growth was flat sequentially. In short, while Amazon was gaining tens of millions of paying subscribers, eBay's growth in total members is tepid at best. And then the next section is Speed Matters. Part of the appeal of Prime membership is the company's free, fast shipping, specifically the move toward one-day or even same-day delivery. Even eBay knows this is a key purchasing factor, saying that buyers are more likely to choose an item with free shipping over an item with a shipping charge, even if the total cost is the same. While eBay gives suggestions like offering free shipping or providing expedited shipping, the third-party seller ultimately decides what to do. In addition, eBay sellers have the option to add a handling time of multiple days to their listings, which can delay fulfillment even further. On the Amazon front, the company's Fulfilled by Amazon service is a significant benefit to sellers with the company picking, packing, and shipping items for third-party sellers. According to the site Big Commerce, FBA gives sellers a 30 to 50% increase in sales. The thought process isn't hard to understand. Prime members look for Shipped by Amazon or Prime, knowing they will get their item as quickly as possible. eBay posted last year, announced a service called Managed Delivery that would launch in 2020. The company focused on lower fulfillment costs and speedy delivery. However, by December 2019, the program was quietly ended. According to a report from the San Jose Business Journal, consultants tied to eBay essentially said the conclusion was you can't compete with Amazon when it comes to fulfillment. eBay knows that fast and free shipping is a key purchasing factor, yet it decided it couldn't go head-to-head with Amazon and is leaving that challenge up to its sellers. Given Amazon's significant lead in e-commerce and its more effective shipping options for third-party sellers, this seems to be the definition of a durable competitive advantage. And finally, the last section is that shipping isn't the only thing moving faster. Amazon leads the race for U.S. online sales, and in multiple cases, the company offers better pricing and faster shipping. Outside of the business of selling products, Amazon seems to offer investors a far more attractive growth in portfolio in other areas as well eBay's focus on its marketplace business is both a blessing and a curse. The company is reportedly looking to sell its classified business, which reportedly could be worth $10 million. When eBay sold its StubHub business early this year, it increased its share buyback plan. Investors might be excited about what eBay would do with $10 billion. While buybacks are a great thing for investors in the short term, eBay will be left with just its core marketplace business. On one hand, eBay's marketplace is highly profitable. And on the other hand, eBay has little control over its inventory and its growth. So just a point I think it was important to share with all of you as uh, eBay sellers, and maybe you sell on Amazon as well, what Amazon is winning on and what we can do on other sites to compete. So if you sell on eBay, obviously shipping can be a factor. Now, most of the past couple of years, I've done free shipping, quote unquote free shipping, The shipping was added into the price. I've started to get away from that because the shipping costs are just so high and it cuts so much into the profit, yet can you compete with Amazon? So it just depends on what you're selling. If you're selling things on eBay that can be found on Amazon, then you probably have to be more competitive. If you're doing vintage and collectibles, you can probably afford to pass the shipping costs on to the customers because they can't go on to Amazon and find those same items. So it depends on, obviously, what you sell, but always things to keep in mind when we learn what uh, buyers are happy with on other sites and see if we can implement those ideas into the sites that we sell on. There are a few new posts over on the Poshmark Facebook page. They have added another uh, Posh Love story for Pride Month. It says, don't stop the Pride Party. We're continuing to celebrate our amazing LGBTQ plus community and spreading all the hashtag Posh Love in another special edition of Community Takeovers. Brad and John, aka the Posh Kings, are sharing their story on what Pride means to them 
and how the Poshmark community has changed their lives and gives their Poshmark closet. And they have a little, uh, about a two minute video here where you can go over and meet them. Uh, another post says, as we close out June and move to a new month, know that we will always lead with love and that the pride we have never stops. We're so proud that the Poshmark community is one that's inclusive, welcoming, and encourages everyone to be their most authentic. Missing the times when we could all be together. Here's a fun flashback photo of when Teen Posh celebra- celebrated Pride together last month, and it has a group of from Posh headquarters, and they are all wearing different color t-shirts and forming a rainbow picture if you want to go see that. And then finally, uh, Poshmark has announced that virtual Posh and Coffee events are back Starting this week, you can turn into these educational events and learn how to build your Poshmark business, connect with Poshers, expand your network. Uh, Whether you're looking to join Poshmark or want to make it your nine to five, you'll learn insider tips straight from the pros. It's a perfect addition to your weekend plans and you can find events that you can join. Uh, They have a link provided over on their Facebook page. I always love to share with you about reselling popping up on mainstream media sites. There's a new article on MsMagazine.com, that's msmagazine.com, titled, Young Entrepreneurs Make Thrifting and Sustainable Fashion Possible During COVID. The article reads, the pandemic has drastically changed consumerism. As many shoppers used to purchasing clothing in person, adjust to a digital shopping experience that's been reduced to a few clicks on a phone. And chances are, digital shopping as a way of life is here to stay. Even as physical U.S. retail stores begin to open, 82% of shoppers say they plan to keep shopping online. So where does that leave secondhand clothes, shoppers, and suppliers? Thrift shopping is said to be one of the most unsafe forms of shopping when in regards to COVID-19 exposure, since the amount of time customers spend in these stores is ultimately greater than other kinds of shopping. While many thrift shops remain closed, others have slowly reopened despite the risk. Stepping foot in a thrift shop can cause virus exposure through secondhand clothing as vectors that otherwise wouldn't be as dangerous in fast fashion store. I do want to point out that that has been debunked, that you aren't really going to catch the virus through touching secondhand clothing. It's about being in an enclosed space for a long period of time. So the longer you're in any store, especially if you are not social distancing and you're not wearing a mask, the higher your risk to exposure. But just touching clothing, as long as you're washing your hands and you know not wiping used shirts all over your face, probably not gonna catch the virus that way. Uh, but this article does go on to say, Instagram thrift accounts help followers stay stylish and safe. For those who want secondhand from the comfort of home, a multitude of powerful young women run specially curated thrift businesses through social media platforms such as Instagram. These businesses are run by fashionistas who brave the thrift shops, buy quality products in bulk, then resell to their consumers. During the last few months, thrift accounts have gained significant exposure and following. Many have begun to take the thrifting world entirely virtual so that by buying new-to-you fashion won't die away throughout the crisis. Not only are thrifting accounts much safer than the current state of shopping, but they limit exposures and ensure that clothes are clean and quality. We stockpile clothes, Julia Thompson, a 20-year-old who runs Thrift Like You Mean It on Instagram, says. This means we don't necessarily have to go out and thrift in an unsafe way. I do go out and thrift as safely as possible and take all the precautions so that shoppers don't have to. Thompson and others like her then post pictures of their thrifted picks, open it to bidders on their account, and auction off their golden finds. Now that is interesting. Running auctions on Instagram? Hmm, I'm going to be looking into that one. Thrift shops may put their unsold clothes into a landfill, so I get out there and find a new piece for a new person. Regenerating new lives for items is the biggest thing. And her shop is a curated consignment shop. Factory exploitation and the fast fashion machine. Uh, this section says as shoppers, as online shopping, excuse me, becomes the new normal, many have opted to use their purchasing power to stop ordering from fast fashion brands like Sheen, Zara, Forever 21, and H&M, which produce bulk amounts of clothing and environmentally unsafe process that causes perpetual pollution. Sacrificing quality for quantity, these pioneers of fast fashion have quickly become the contemporary model heralds to mass consumerism, buying and selling as much as possible as quickly as possible. And of course, fast fashion brands typically rely on inhumane and exploitive work conditions that put women who disproportionately serve as garment workers in these suppliers' factories in harm's way. For instance, 80 to 95% of workers in factories in Bangladesh, Cambodia, Indonesia, and Sri Lanka are women. 
On TikTok every day, I see people buying from Sheen. It's huge right now. That is the furthest thing from sustainable. And it's these viral TikToks that cause this kind of shopping to go up. Um, this is from, wait, let's see. I'm sorry. I lost my thing. Victoria Stanford of Green America. Uh, she also says um, by buying fashion items that would ultimately end up in a landfill or purchasing from a Goodwill, I'm trying to put those items into the hands of someone that will ultimately give them a second life. And she voiced a sad reality. The fashion industry is a stubborn industry that doesn't like to change its ways for anything except more profit. And how can you take action? As for contributing to thrift shops, while it's tempting to take your spring cleaning items and drop them off thrift shop right now, hold off. These shops' inventories have been overwhelmed by the amount of product dropped off, inherently making thrift shops generally more unsafe for those braving their halls. That's an interesting statement for this article to make. Hmm. Don't go out and source because, well, I should say, I think they're saying for shoppers who are buying for themselves, don't go to the thrift stores. You can go online from resellers. So I guess it's a boon to us. <laughs> hey, guys, don't go to the thrift shop. I'll go for you and you can buy it for me. Uh, this uh, goes on to say the growing inventories have also caused struggling shops to purchase more storage space for items that they may not be able to disinfect as quickly as they're coming in. Okay, like right there, I'm not really agreeing with that because, again, they're now saying that the virus, you're not catching the virus from touching things. You're catching the virus if it is inhaled into your nose or your lungs. Um, so that's a little, I, I have to put my, I have to put the the true story in there. <laughs> um, but it does say to hang on to your old garments and donate them when secondhand shops are less overwhelmed. And certainly don't throw anything in the trash. Before handing items off to thrift stores, try to see if you can give them a second life yourself. Many have begun to repurpose old pieces to make new, trendy, or all together new items. So I think this article definitely is uh, favorable to resellers. Of course, it's basically telling shoppers, don't go to the thrift stores. It's not safe. Go online and buy from people who went for you. So I guess in that vein, it's uh, thank you, Ms. Magazine for sending people our way. Although this does focus on people who are selling on Instagram, but Instagram auctions, I'm definitely going to look into that one. I will check that out and report back when I know more. And finally today, you may have heard about companies boycotting social media advertising. Uh, this article and this information is on all kinds of sites. I'm just referencing the latest from CNBC.com. It's titled, Starbucks is the latest company to pause advertising across social media platforms. Uh, it says that it promises to have discussions internally and with media partners and civil rights organizations to stop the spread of hate speech. The company will continue to post on social media without paid promotion. Uh, it goes on to say Starbucks is the latest major advertiser to make such an announcement amid a boycott that began with Facebook, but is now hitting other social media platforms. Coca-Cola said on Friday it would pause advertising on all social media platforms globally, while Unilever is halting advertising on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter in the U.S. through December 31st. On Saturday, Spirit's giant, Dia I'm not sure what this says, D-I-A-G-E-O. It's spirits. I don't drink alcohol. I don't know what's in. It's pausing paid advertising globally on major social media platforms. Now, the Starbucks spokesman said that this will not include YouTube. So they will still run ads on YouTube. So for those of us who make YouTube videos and rely on AdSense, thank you, Starbucks. <laughs> Um, Starbucks said that though it's positive advertising, it isn't joining the Stop Hate for Profit boycott campaign, which kicked off earlier this month after a group of organizers called on Facebook advertisers to pause their ad spend during the month of July. And more than 100 marketers, including Levi's, Patagonia, REI, Lending Club, and the North Face, have announced their intention to join. Uh, so this is in an effort to not contribute money to basically Facebook, although like I said, Twitter um, and Instagram included as well over ads that get through that they believe are um, promoting hate speech or do include hate speech. So this will be through July and some retailers through the end of the year. Although, like I said, for YouTube, I don't know that it doesn't seem that it's going to include YouTube. Again, it's mainly focused on Facebook and Twitter. And then there's some over on Instagram. So I did want to share that with you if you do utilize um, advertising on the social media sites and also if you do 
make money on YouTube via AdSense. I don't think it's going to affect AdSense, but um, we shall see how this continues to play out. And that's a wrap on today's show. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Check out the show notes below the video to links to the articles I referenced. And if you want to learn how to make money on eBay and YouTube the way I do, check out my books, which are in my Amazon store. That's the first link below the video. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.